tout commencions. Euh, bonjour, good morning. Merci euh, tout d'abord le SNEP pour organiser cet événement, notamment Aurélie et Alexandre, euh, mais aussi Laurent et Romain de nos équipes françaises. Et merci à vous tous qui avez pris le temps de nous rejoindre aujourd'hui. Je vois qu'on Ah oui, 80. Ah oui, déjà. Oui, OK. Donc, très bien. C'est super. Bah, écoutez, je suis Olivier Robert Murphy. Je suis le PDG de Spitfire Audio et euh, j'ai la joie d'être avec euh, Paul Thompson, qui est cofondateur de, de la compagnie. En fait, on est, on, est, on est simplement une music tech qui existe depuis 15 ans. On est une centaine de personnes, principalement basées à Londres. Et on propose des, des nouvelles technologies dans plus de 150 pays. Et aujourd'hui, l'équipe quand on a montré au Snap ce qu'on faisait, ils disaient, mais c'est super ça, ça serait bien de le partager. Et donc, l'équipe voulait vous montrer les dernières innovations et notamment quelque chose qui s'appelle euh, Air Reverb. Parce que nous sommes, comme vous pouvez voir, nous sommes en direct euh, à Air Studio, à Londres. Certains d'entre vous se demandent peut-être, c'est quoi Air Studio Alors, je vais demander à Paul, c'est quoi Air Studio Bonjour à tous. So, Air Studios was established in 1970. I will translate in a minute. Good. <laughs> by the legendary producer, Sir George Martin, producer of the Beatles. And it moved to this beautiful church in 1992. And it's very quickly become known as one of the finest recording venues in the world. Alors, ce qu'a dit Paul, c'est qu'en fait, ça a été établi en 1970 par le producteur des Beatles, Sir, Sir George Martin. Vous tous, vous connaissez. Euh, ils ont déménagé dans cette église en 1992. Je dois dire qu'elle est absolument magnifique. Et c'est devenu un des, plus, un des studios les plus euh, reconnus dans le monde, notamment pour les enregistrements. Euh, bon, qui enregistre ici et, 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 et pourquoi Est-ce que c'est des chansons pop, rock Est-ce que c'est des compositions classiques Oui, tout. Um, so, many huge blockbuster films by composers like Hans Zimmer, John Powell, Gabriel Yared, and also pop artists, Coldplay, Taylor Swift, Billie Eilish, Burner Boy. Okay. So, en fait, c'est beaucoup de films, euh, de blockbusters, des musiques de films sont enregistrées ici, notamment par des compositeurs comme euh, Hans Zimmer, John Powell, et, mais aussi des artistes euh, pop euh, comme Taylor Swift, Coldplay, euh, Billie Eilish, qui vient de sortir un nouvel album. Mm -hmm. Euh, donc, une range de musique assez large sont enregistrées ici. J'étais à un événement de, de l'IRCAM il n'y a pas longtemps, que vous connaissez bien en France, et, et ils ont dit 75% la qualité, de la qualité d'enregistrement d'un son, d'une note, vient de qui les enregistre, mais également où ces sons sont enregistrés. Euh, sur cette base, pourquoi Paul Air Studio est si spécial Pourquoi c'est différent So it's a hexagonal room, which is quite complex. There's a large organ case and also galleries with seating in. And so the sound is quite a complex reverberation. But also you have a very clever system with a canopy that can go up and down to alter the reflectivity of the room. Oof. Okay. La, la presse principale de Air Studio, qui s'appelle Lynn Hurts Hall, il a, euh, me disait Paul, une forme hexagonale, euh, hexagonale et qui inclut des galeries, euh, euh, un orgue. Et donc, en gros, le, le son se reflète dans une, vraiment très spécialement. Ça donne un son, un, un reflet très spécial. Et en plus de ça, il, il m'explique qu'il y a une technologie du plafond qui monte et qui descend. Et donc, la réflexion du son euh, n'est pas la même en fonction de là où on se positionne, de la hauteur de plafond, etc. etc. Donc, c'est c'est un des studios les plus fins pour ce son. Maintenant, parlons de Air Reverb. Pourquoi avons-nous décidé de développer ce produit euh, Qu'est-ce qu que ça apporte En quoi c'est innovatif et, et combien de temps il a fallu pour le développer So, we've been working with the team at Air for more than 15 years and we decided to collaborate to create a virtual version of this beautiful hall. So, over two years and countless sessions, we experimented and developed uh, with a new technology, virtual positioning technology, so that literally anybody can be sat in a separate studio or at home and they can put their instruments into the sound of this incredible room. Alors, 15 ans qu'il travaille avec Air Studio, 
Ils ont décidé de collaborer. Ça a pris beaucoup de temps, euh, ce développement, plus de deux ans. Et ils ont décidé de créer une nouvelle technologie qui s'appelle VPT, Virtual Positioning Technology, qui, qui permet une, une reproduction du son. Donc, en gros, euh, n'importe qui dans le monde peut poser ses, ses instruments, même s'ils sont dans leur chambre ou je ne sais pas quoi, ils peuvent poser partout. Donc, si je comprends bien, ma, euh, ma fille Louise, par exemple, elle compose, euh, elle écrit sa chanson, elle fait son piano, elle a fini, elle a tout enregistré. Elle peut, grâce à ça, transporter comme si elle avait enregistré dans le studio. Exactement. So, it has already been used, in fact, uh, in the room itself. Um, there were players in separate recording booths uh, on a huge blockbuster film a couple of weeks ago um, that I can't say the name of. <laughs> But the engineers and the team in the control room were couldn't believe how how these musicians that were separated off sounded like they were sitting with the orchestra in the room. Excellent. Uh, but oui, il dit qu'en fait c'est déjà utilisé. Uh, la semaine dernière, il était ici. Uh pour l'enregistrement d'un énorme blockbuster, d'un film euh, important qui, dont il ne peut pas dire le nom. Mais justement, il y avait une partie ici, il y avait d'autres musiciens qui étaient ailleurs. Et en fait, tout le monde était ensemble dans ce hall. Alors, souvent, euh, seeing is believing. Alors, je suggère maintenant que nous ayons une démonstration. Pour cela, nous avons Oma Schmidt, compositrice respectée, qui va nous donner un aperçu de comment elle utilise la reverb. Maintenant, on va rejoindre Omaï dans son studio. Tout d'abord, Omaï va jouer pour vous une création musicale qu'elle a faite de trois minutes. Euh, et après, alors on va écouter euh, tranquillement cette euh, création très belle. Et après, elle reviendra instrument par instrument pour vous montrer comment elle utilise Air Reverb. Et elle va vous faire avant, après. Euh, et je dois dire que c'est assez impressionnant. Omaï, over to you. Thank you, and hi there. Yeah, I want to show you Air Studios Reverb in action. I have a demo here on which I used the stunning reverb, which I'm going to play you first. And I will look at the different reverb choices that I have made here on the different instrument groups. So let's have a listen first to see what kind of sounds we have here, and then we'll go through it.
So I was thinking about the different instruments that I have here and where I want them to sit within the reverb. So let's look at the piano first. I have here actually the BBC Symphonic Orchestra piano, which we recorded at Maida Vale. And I wanted to give it the air hole treatment. So let's solo that one out and listen back to it without any reverb. It's so lovely. Let's just have a look at what we have within here. This is the look of the Reverb plugin itself. And what you have is a drop down menu with loads of different presets. And some of these are instrument specific. So I wanted to have a bit more of a contained and warm sound with the piano. So I went with something that sounded in that kind of direction. I went with Intimate Piano Warm. And what you have then in here is all these various controls of that reverb. In the mixer, for example, you have the position of the source sound that you can change. And we have the tree and the uh, binaural head for this one. Then within the hall, there's a canopy that you can lower. So we have three different heights here. You have low, medium, and high. This one's set to low, giving you a little bit more of a smaller and intimate feel. Then there's a canopy material between wood and Malatek. Malatek gives you a bit more of a dampened sound. Then you also have the gallery damping. So within the hall, you have these galleries where you can bring in these giant foam pads that help contain the sound. So it's not bouncing off all the wood and the other materials. And in source, every position recorded was recorded in different directions. So left, back right, front, and then also upwards. And then you also have a sub in there too. And with these faders, you can control which way the instrument is radiating. You can make it a lot wider and change the direction within here. And now obviously it's up to you how much you want to blend in of that reverb. Let's have a look at the strings. We have some really nice solo strings that have recorded in a pretty dry space. And without it, it sounds like this. I love it. It just instantly sits in this really beautiful space and immediately blends really nicely. Let's have a look what I have here. The strings, I want it to be more open and bigger and wider. So there was a preset called Lush Hall. I think it actually gives you uh, the Melatech, but I, I chose the wood instead. So again, just going for the presets and then tweaking it as and how I want to. The canopy is set to high. So opens it up a lot more and I've taken out the damping here as well. Again, I'm using the tree, but then I'm also using more ambient mics and microphones that we had on the canopy as well. Let me just solo maybe. And see what that for example sounds like so you can make it sound really nice and distant let's put these back on and if we have a look at shape we have here some early reflections and also some late reflections and then over here you have the eq and you can also change that from pre to post if you wanted to if you ever listen to the percussion, again, uh, fairly dry as well. Let's just do that without any reverb.
again, I think it just sits really nicely and I've just loaded up a preset. This more contained, it's a smaller version of the whole in a way, more of a medium dark sound to it. So again, the canopy is all the way down here. Then the material is wood, but maybe we can change it to Melitech and bringing back in the dampening for this one. I'm sticking with the tree and the outrigger within the source. This is the way the instrument is facing and radiating from. And then within shape, you have some early reflections in again, some early stretch and late reflections. And this is what the EQ is doing for those. And then, for example, one of the percussions could be on a different reverb. So I've actually just loaded that directly on the channel. Um, we have your wine glass clarity. Maybe a little less of the tail stretch. You know, just play around with it until there's something that you like. And lastly, let's have a look at the synths. Let's do with that first. These already have some baked in reverb, but you can always add a little bit to blend with the other instruments that you have in your session. Or you can make it even, in this case, a lot more ethereal if you wanted to. So if I was to turn it up all the way. This really beautiful ambient sound. What I have in this reverb is uh, actually went for a washed out synth and in the mix you have the gallery mics up and the tree. The source has a wider radiation again and this is the shape so you have the early reflections and late reflections on and this is what a EQ looks like. The canopy on this one is all the way up and then also taking the dampening out. Within the context of this piece, maybe I don't want to have it quite so washed out, but I can imagine it being really nice for an ambient moment within a score. And then one other thing that I thought might be nice to show is within the plugin, I'm using um, it directly on one of the channels. Let's just solo this one synth sound as well. Let's turn it off first. Turn it up so you can hear it. More of a guitar -y sound. I'm just gonna put that back because I know it's going to be a lot louder. Is playing with the stretch mode. You have granular here, and this is what it sounds like. And I actually quite like the sound, how it kind of poked out now and then within the piece. really subtly having this different texture in there as well. So these are the different reverb settings that I've used. Obviously these are all in a way creative choices and you can do so much with this. Let's just listen to a snippet with everything in without it and then with reverb. These are all the reverb settings that are used for this particular piece and I think the plugin sounds absolutely lovely and stunning. If you want to learn more about it though, be sure to check out Paul's walkthrough on the website, otherwise back over to you. Thank you, Omai. Thank you so much. Um, okay, I watched this video with you and it could look 
quite complex. And I was talking to Paul about it. And I said, you have to be really a specialist to understand that. And he told me, well, we have some presets. What is a preset? So the presets get you uh, sound that has been designed by either a member of the Spitfire team or the air engineers who've created a huge load of really great presets as well. And they can be everything from orchestral sounds to keyboards to design sounds in the hall to vocals. Uh, lots and lots of really easy to use. You just click on the thing that sounds. Is like there that. the Hans Zimmer preset? Yes. We oh. recorded. So, so Hans likes the hall set up in a certain way. And that is an option that you can click on. With. Oh, okay. Yeah. Euh, ce que dit Paul, alors je lui ai posé la question pour savoir les presets parce que je trouvais que c'était un peu compliqué, euh, ça, ça marche, il dit mais il suffit d'appuyer sur un bouton et tout est pré-réglé pour avoir le positionnement de l'orchestre, le son et, et notamment, je, il me dit, il y a un preset Hans Zimmer, donc vous cliquez et c'est tout comment Hans Zimmer aime enregistrer euh, ses concerts. Très bien, euh, on a des questions, on a des questions, donc on va les adresser maintenant. Grégory, Grégory Betten, bonjour Grégory. Uh, first, merci de le mettre uh, en anglais. Donc, je vais traduire. Alors, est-ce que le reverb est en stéréo seulement Y a-t-il des multicanal output, notamment en Atmos setup ah, J'adore Atmos, oui. So, we are working on uh, multi-out, uh, multi-channel, um, which will be a free update. And that is going to come later in the year. So, yes, it is going stereo for, for launch, but multi-channel coming uh, and it will be donc la réponse est oui, ça fait partie des prochains updates parce que régulièrement ces produits sont updatés avec des nouveaux presets et des nouvelles fonctionnalités. Anonymous attendit, bonjour Anonymous. Uh, quel DO uh, fonctionne avec Air Studio? Alors, uh, um, what DO works with Air Studio? And can, uh, maybe can you specify what is a DO? Digital Audio Workstation. Digital Audio Workstation is the software we use yeah. when we compose. So, exactly. Such as? Such as Logic. Logic. Uh, Yeah, uh, okay. Cubase, Cubase what, Appleton, Pro Tools, Pro Tools, all of these things. Okay, so ce sont des software quand vous créez de la musique, uh, Air Studio works with all of them. Yes, all of them. Et travaille avec toutes. Merci. Deuxième, Anonymous, une deuxième question d'Anonymous. <laughs> Quelles sont les autres bibliothèques qui sonnent vraiment bien? Ah, what library should we use that works the best with Air Reverb? Yes, so we've I've tried it with lots and lots of different libraries. Uh, it's very good if you have a dry library or if you just use the close mics from a library. Um, What's a dry library? A dry library meaning one that hasn't been recorded in a large space. Okay. So one in a, oh, okay, okay, in a okay. room like this. Okay. Um, so very, very good for those. It works really well. You know, I've heard a lot of examples of it working with uh, Vienna Symphony Library with orchestral tools with east west so it actually it's not just for spitfire libraries it works for everything oh i love it so en gros une librairie c'est un son qu'on achète un instrument euh, un piano une percussion un violon euh, et la question c'est est-ce qu'on peut est-ce que ça marche le mieux avec quoi est-ce que nous dit paul c'est qu'en fait le, ça marche vraiment le mieux évidemment avec ce qu'on appelle des dry libraries vous l'enregistrez dans un petit studio une petite pièce et c'est là que vous créez, euh, que, que l'effet sera encore plus gros. Et ça marche avec toutes les librairies du monde entier. Ça n'a pas besoin d'être Spitfire Audio. Euh, c'est un outil qui fonctionne pour tout le monde. Grégory, euh, Grégory, again, rebonjour. How do you know that? <rire> Comment il sait ça, Grégory? Grégory dit que Air Studio était un pas chaud chaud d'enregistrer de, euh, tout, tout leur son. Euh, pourquoi euh, ça a changé Et aussi, deuxième question, est-ce qu'on peut imaginer à euh, Bayreuth de le faire euh, au BBC Mandeville, etc. So, uh, that, it is true. I have never allowed anybody to sample the room space. But with the project that we've done together, this is a level beyond anything that exists prior to this. So, for example, currently in the product are 67,000 impulse responses, which is a, a level above anything that's What is existed. an impulse? So an impulse response is created from a specially designed sign suite, all the way up, and that is, then creates one element of sound. 
So for each position in the hall, we've recorded this in different directions, up uh, with a sub uh, speaker. And from all of these, using the virtual positioning technology, you can calculate the exact radiation of an instrument within the space. Ooh. So having, having developed this technology together, um, we're now very happy and AIR are very happy to bring the sound of Lindhurst Hall to users all over the world. That's très intéressant. Donc, en fait, ce qu'il dit, c'est que euh, la technologie a permis, euh, permis cette technologie, euh, il y a 67 000 euh, impulse response. So, en gros, quand vous jouez un instrument, on peut décider de combien ça projette, sur combien de mètres, sur combien de sons. Et ça, ce n'est pas possible aujourd'hui. Il faudrait tout bouger manuellement. Donc, en fait, la technologie permet à Air Studio de faire quelque chose qu'ils ne pouvaient pas faire jusqu'à maintenant. Donc, ça enhance leur offre et surtout, Air Studio, maintenant, vous pouvez le... Et dans le monde entier. Vous n'avez pas besoin de venir à Londres tous les jours. Um, is there a reverb? Ney, bonjour Ney. Uh, is there a reverb? Be... Est-ce que ça va être disponible chez Linux, uh, GNU, BST3? Uh, so, not currently with GNU or Linux, um, but if we get enough requests, then that might be something we put into the development. So, okay. we're, we're focusing on the things that are most uh, popular and most requested. So, Ney, je vois que vous avez écrit en anglais, mais donc vous avez probablement compris la réponse de Paul, mais en gros, pas prévu aujourd'hui, mais si on a de la demande, on l'inclura dans nos prochains updates. Est-ce qu'on peut enregistrer Air Studio sur un instrument audio sec? Oui, on en a parlé. Yes, we talked yes, about that. Absolutely. So, oui, tout à fait. Et c'est justement là que c'est encore le mieux parce que ça fait une différence de malade. Terence, bonjour Terence. Est-ce que Logic Pro, oui. Luna as well. Euh, partout. Luna, Luna um, je ne sais pas. Yes. It should be because yeah, BST because he works, use, uh, yeah, because he works for all of them. So my previous question has already been asked, so I have another one. Uh, yes, of course, we said everyone. <laughs> Est-ce que vous pensez que le son sera toujours better dans le sud de Londres? Ooh. Très bonne question, Terence. <laughs> oh, you got it in English. Yeah, a uh, very good question. So as we mentioned earlier, um, this the team working in air a few weeks ago were using the uh, musicians, there were some percussionists and other musicians in the booths, so separated off from the hall. And they were using the reverb to place those musicians back into the hall. And with the, all of the team, the engineers, the producers, the composer, they were astounded by how they couldn't tell that that musician, they were looking out and expecting to see them. So it's, it's really extraordinary, but It's a beautiful, beautiful space. So if you ever get the opportunity to come and record here, you really must. C'est les deux. Il n'y a pas de compétition. C'est on peut répliquer le son exact, mais la technologie nous permet de faire d'autres choses euh, un peu plus loin. Arnaud, bonjour Arnaud. C'est le premier uh, Spitfire Effect plugin. It's great. Merci Arnaud. Uh, we appreciate. What next? <laughs> well, we have some exciting stuff in the pipeline. But I can't go into it. Come on, give us a little something. Maybe a product? The next product? We are working with the amazing composer, Olafur Arnolds, on a product that is coming out later this year. Okay. And that's very exciting. Good. <laughs> Super. We'll give you a bit of something. On vous donne un peu de quelque chose. Uh, Grégory, uh, qui dit que merci, que, que c'est bien de les compétiteurs. Oui, on est ensemble, on travaille tous ensemble pour promouvoir la musique. C'est notre, ce notre croyance. Alors, da, 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 da. Okay. et merci d'être un client, uh, Grégory. OK, so they're, they're very good, you know, very good products. This is a little bit different. It's almost more like, because of the way that we've, because of the, the sheer amount of kind of, impulse responses and the way that we enable you to, to calculate the radiation, it's, it, it allows very much more precise control over, uh, for example, the French horns project backwards, um, a timpani projects upwards, but you can control the amount of radiation in every direction. Mm, that's so interesting. So, uh, ce qu'il dit, c'est qu'en fait, uh, oui, ça marche avec uh, tout ce que vous suggérez ici, mais, mais surtout, ça permet un meilleur contrôle d'instrument que parfois on ne peut pas contrôler. C'est-à-dire que quand on joue, quand on joue dans le studio normal, ben, le son est par là. Là, on a la possibilité de le contenir dans un certain, euh, le son de l'instrument dans un certain euh, rayon. Voilà. Euh, 
Romain, bonjour Romain. Could we have more presets in the next? Uh, Est-ce qu'on peut avoir plus de presets? C'est-à-dire on appuie le bouton yep. et ça fait le son tout, tout près. Yes. So there are more presets going out with the next update, which is imminent. Ah, okay. Very, very soon. Ooh, uh, okay. And the uh, which includes a whole load from the air team. And we are continuing, we will be continuing to update and add more presets. Donc, la team, la team des ingénieurs uh, à Air Studio ont développé, parce que c'est eux qui l'utilisent tous les jours, ont utilisé des, ont développé des presets pour vous les offrir. Et c'est imminent, we, we, weeks or days? Days. Days. Maybe et today. donc, uh, <laughs> il va y avoir une nouvelle, uh, un update qui va être fait et qui inclura tous ces nouveaux presets. Air Studio... Well optimized for the little CPUs. Alors, is it optimized for the little CPUs? Yes. I know that was a that was an issue, by the way, you yeah. have to work on. Yeah, people people um, were asking this. Um, so, when you if you look at the uh, various videos we've got, there's some videos on the Spitfire channel uh, with the walkthrough. There's also a video on my channel as well. Um, you'll see the reported CPU in the plugin tells you the percentage of a single core that is being used. That'll give you a really good idea. For example, for the trailer, uh, I had probably 14 or 15 going on my old Mac Pro 2019, and it, it didn't have any worry with that at all. It's, it's quite light on the CPU. Okay. Oui, des efforts ont été faits pour le, le CPU, pour justement que ça puisse marcher, euh, fonctionner euh, partout. Euh, Ney, deux, deux dernières questions et après on va malheureusement se séparer. Euh, Ney nous demande si, euh, je suis d'accord avec les, les plugins, il y a beaucoup de settings. settings. Est-ce qu'il n'y a pas un système pour automatiser euh, pour chacun Est-ce qu'il y a une limite euh, d'automatisation Yes, ok, so I think I understand the question. So you can't automate a change in the impulse response while the reverb is playing because it has to be calculated offline. The reason for this is it is enormously complicated, even though it only takes a few seconds to calculate. Um, what it's doing is quite complex under the hood. So in order to use this vast number of impulse responses and the calculation engine for the virtual positioning technology, that's not something you can change in real time. It has to be calculated and then you hear it. OK. Donc, en gros, possible. Euh, quoi complexe euh, la technologie, est-ce qu'il y a un double hood euh, Avec ses limitations, mais possible. That's what I understood. Yeah. Le, limited, but possible. Yeah. OK. Uh, yeah. OK. <laughs> euh, et enfin, Steven, euh, dernière question. Est-ce que le nombre de musiciens dans la pièce a un impact sur la reverb And uh, si oui, est-ce que ça peut être simulé ah, Très bonne question. Mm. Could we simulate the number of musicians? It's not the same if you have one violinist and a complete orchestra. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It does change the sound slightly, but it doesn't change the sound anything like as much as the uh, elements that we've included. For example, the gallery damping and moving the canopy up and down and changing the material of the canopy. So these things, we, we ran many, many tests with different experiments and uh, and with different kind of baffles out and things like that. And these were the things that made the sound change the most. So those are the things that we've concentrated. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Donc, oui, ça a un impact. C'est une très bonne question, Steven. Ça a un impact entre un musicien et un orchestre entier. Mais ça n'a pas un impact significant. Le vrai impact, c'est effectivement de changer la hauteur du plafond, de changer le matériel pour l'acoustique sur le côté, parce que c'est une fonction qu'on peut faire. Est-ce que ça absorbe plus le son, le son Donc, c'est surtout là que se fait la différence. Euh, et enfin, uh, tricky question. Congrats again for all the time. Perfect conclusion de Grégory qui nous dit congratulations pour uh, partager tout cela uh, et uh, for the hard work. Merci. Ces mots sont uh, acceptés. Uh, on, vous, on remercie encore le SNEP, uh, Aurélie, Alexandre pour uh, tout ce que vous avez fait pour organiser cela. À la prochaine fois, vous souhaitons une merveilleuse journée. Over to you to say goodbye. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs>